Now on Adjust Your TV News. A massive tornado strikes Nashville and Central Tennessee, upcoming industry conferences and events, and FileTrack announces a partnership with Hover. And now our top story. The claims management system FileTrack recently announced a partnership with Hover, the company that lets you create an accurate 3D model of a building with measurements from smartphone photos. Through this partnership, FileTrack will integrate Hover's technology into its claims management system, providing its customers with the ability to access accurate measurements, up-to-date property photos, and 3D visualizations, dramatically improving the customer experience. FileTrack customers will receive a full report of accurate measurements in PDF form and an AI-derived 3D sketch of the property that can be stored in the FileTrack system and be accessed anytime in the claims or reinspection process. And now for upcoming conferences and events. IMS and NNC are announcing their annual 2020 Hurricane Catastrophe Conference this year at the Beau Rivage Hotel and Casino in Biloxi, Mississippi. The CAT Conference will be held from May 17th to the 20th, 2020. The ticket price includes three breakfasts, two lunches, breaks, a social, and continuing education credit hours. The final deadline for the early bird registration is March 31st, 2020, or until tickets are sold out. Visit imsclaims.com for more information and to register for this event. Also, the annual PLRB Claims Conference is Sunday, March 8th through Wednesday, March 11th, 2020 at the Gaylord National Hotel in National Harbor, Maryland. This one's coming up quick, but there's still time to register at plrbclaimsconference.org. If you have a conference or other event and you would like it announced on Adjuster TV News, please visit adjustertv.com slash news. And now here's the weather for field adjusters with Adjuster TV weather correspondent, Max Olson. Thanks, Matt. Obviously, lots to talk about here with the Nashville tornado that went through the metro, the hail off to the west, the continued tornadoes down Interstate 40 to the east on a day that wasn't overly hyped to be a big severe weather event. That's what starts happening when you get to this time of year. These events become more common. Now, before we discuss that, let's talk about the 2019 floods, what led to them and what it might mean for 2020. Now to an out of focus version of myself in Kansas City, Missouri. Behind me is the Missouri River, and this was one of many locations in the Midwest that experienced record-setting flooding in spring of last year. Over spring of 2019, these floods caused billions of dollars in damages, thousands upon thousands of insurance claims, and even three reported deaths. Now, how did all of this start? Well, as you can imagine, it started with rain. Now, fall and winter of 2018 were extremely wet in the Midwest. In fact, many areas saw their wettest winter on record. This pattern continued, which started to set the stage for a bad spring. However, the kicker came in March of 2019 when a blizzard struck the region. Adjuster TV was there covering it in Nebraska, but the totals extended all the way to the Northeast throughout many other states, dumping as much as two feet of snow in some areas. Now, this event was followed by a warm stretch. In fact, some areas that had received feet of snow not days later were in 60 degree temperatures. This led to very rapid snow melt, which inundated the streams, tributaries, and rivers of the area. This is where the flooding really began to take over. Many areas were already at or above flood stage, and a bad situation was made even worse by a very active spring and summer. We saw many severe weather outbreaks in April and especially May. This led to isolated extreme pockets of heavy rainfall for numerous days. 2019 will go on record as some of the worst flooding this region has seen in decades. But what does this mean for 2020? Will we see more of the same? So overall, we had a relatively wet fall and winter, but it wasn't quite the record setter like 2019 had. But that doesn't mean we're out of the woods because these areas have still not fully recovered from last year's floodings. The soils are still extremely saturated. Rivers are running high. And there's two other factors, of course, that we have to look at, one being snowpack and the other being future precipitation. So let's take a look on the computer here, see what the forecast models are predicting. So looking at the current snowpack, pack versus this time last year we can see last year we did have a more expansive area covered but overall not uh, too glaringly different the big factor was obviously that march storm followed by the very quick warm-up that caused that big influx in melt and runoff and we can see here on the gfs looking at the next few weeks it's going to be wet more so in the southeast we might see some rain in the midwest but overall nothing crazy substantial yet but we are still very early in the season 
So while we may not see the intense record setting year that we saw in 2019, Flooding is pretty much a certain, based on the fact that the soils are still very saturated, the rivers are still running high, and we still have all this moisture to contend with, the typical snow melt-off that's going to happen in the spring, along with any future periods of prolonged rainfall or severe weather outbreaks. That leads us nicely into our next segment, which is the tornadoes that struck the Nashville area and the hail. Let's go ahead and look at a map discussing exactly what was reported where. As you can see here, we had a very localized event. This was not a large outbreak with hundreds and hundreds of reports of damage and severe weather across numerous states. It was relatively confined to three main states, Missouri, Kentucky, and Tennessee. Now the main thing to note here was a supercell that developed in western Tennessee and tracked its way east. It produced very large hail just west of Nashville. We see a report here in Charlotte of 2.5 inch hail. We can see a photo here from the Dixon area of large hail. This was big stuff, some of the biggest we've seen so far this year. But that kind of petered out by the time the storm was ready to produce a tornado which happened just on the west side of Nashville. All right, so here we're looking at an estimated track of the tornado. This is nothing set in stone. The tornado was likely not as wide as it is shown in some portions here, but it was still a relatively wide tornado. It was a strong tornado. As of the recording of this, we have a preliminary EF3 rating with the potential for it to maybe even go up to a low end EF4. Regardless, it's still a very substantial tornado, and it is not 100% certain if it was all one long track tornado or if there were two. Regardless, we still have a extreme amount of damage over a expansive area. Multiple cities hit uh, Interstate 40. It basically rode along at one point and did a lot of damage to a lot of vehicles traveling down. And obviously, we have many deaths throughout the area, which is a very unfortunate circumstance, something that is bound to happen with these late night events when people are just asleep and not able to get the warnings. And once again, I'll reiterate that the big hail stayed pretty much west of the metro. When the tornado was on the ground, uh, there were reports of quarter size hail on the north side of Nashville and other communities, but not a big hail producer when it was uh, becoming tornadic for some reason. I'm not sure exactly why that is, but I have seen that happen before. So we are basically only looking at big hail in smaller communities out to the west. No major metropolitan areas got big hail. Now details will be emerging here over the coming weeks as to the exact extent of the damage. However, if you are in the area, I would absolutely be ready for an influx of claims here shortly. If that will extend further out for them calling adjusters in from multiple states, we're not sure quite yet how extensive that damage is, but it is looking pretty bad. So if you're in the general area, definitely be prepared to potentially be called to action with this storm. There is extensive damage throughout a large area. We'll keep you updated here at Adjuster TV when we find anything else out about this situation. Back to you, Matt. Thanks, Max. If you've got an announcement or story that you want independent adjusters to know about, get your message in front of more than 16,000 eyeballs every single month on Adjuster TV News. Visit adjustertv.com slash news for more information. Adjuster TV News, where no news is bad news. Bad news is good news at Adjuster TV News. When news breaks, we fix it. As always, thanks for watching and stay classy, Adjuster. Adjuster TV News, pray for rain. At Adjuster TV News, we've upped our standards. Up yours too.